been seeing a lot of. Um, I guess we'll just have to wait until we're in game and, and see, you know, are they going to give gold to the Blitzcrank? You can do some things like just building generically strong items on completion. Like you can go Blitzcrank and farm on the Blitzcrank and just grab an early redemption or grab an early righteous glory and utilize that, you know, more for the utility uh, and less for the individual kind of like power scaling there on the Blitzcrank. So that is an option. And honestly, I'm just really excited to see this one play out because, you know, Tom Kench, while a, a bit of a snoozer champion, individually you know does have semi global presence also so you have the tf you have the tom kench you can move to side lanes that can help to enable jace who i think is yeah. going to be the main focus here for golden guardians and in, in getting him ahead so i think they have some clear power points there and i'm excited to see if golden guardians can actually execute on that against FlyQuest, who has been a really strong team so is there anything we're going to have to see Santorin do on this Graves to make sure he can supplement damage if Sen is not, be more damage if the team can't provide it, right? What is he going to have to do anything different this game? Um, I mean, I think what he's really going to have to do is is keep in mind, you know, all these globals that could come out, right? He has got to <laughs> stay ahead of the, the Lee Sen. Yeah. You want to be power farming. You want to be playing, you know, in your opponent's face and counter jungling. But that means you have to have accurate timers on things like the TF ult, like the Tom Kench ult, because mm -hmm. Because while you can win the 1v1 against the Lee Sin, you know, as long as you save the quick draw to actually dodge that, that resonating strike, you'll win that 1v1. You'll be able to chase him down with the phase rush. Right. But if TF ults in on your head and you just start giving over kills, you're going to fall behind and you're going to become useless. And Ignore, ooh. no, it's a bait. Oh. Almost a little bait. <laughs> but not so, really. Very interesting. So it is Doran's Blade on MASH. So they're actually going to farm on MASH. And, and I'm really interested to see, uh, you know, where... He goes uh, with this, you know, how exactly they do want to play it out. This is a lane with a lot of CC. So whether yeah. or not the Senna is farming, like he should have less souls because he's actually farming the CS. And when you're farming, you have less time to actually, you know, spend nonstop just poking your opponents and farming souls off them. Uh, but if you can land a hook, you have hook into knock up straight into the root will trigger usually out of that. If you have done it early, you know, there's a pretty good timing window for that. So that is a lot of CC. You have the slow as well from the glacial augment. So there is the ability to really lock people down and, and punish them pretty heavily. They just run you out of lane. It's going to be tough once you get caught one time, right? So mm -hmm. we'll see how they start coming down through the river. Ignar doing a good job of body shield. They're pulling Tom first. Remember, he has Lick from level one, so who he is going to be trying to get in here with even more. Acquired taste, not too much applying here unless they can fully get it, and Ignar is going to back himself off. So, nice trade from FBI and Huhi to say, hey, they're probably coming down from the blue area to make sure nothing's happening there. Let's take some damage. Yeah, that was honestly really, really smart. And they even missed all the melee minions. So they missed not only the farm, but they missed the experience there too. Good catch. Um, you know, they have a really good level one. If you face check into that Tom Kench and he can get stacks on you, it's very hard to actually deal with. You know, the Guardian was there too. Uh, FBI has a lot higher straight up DPS than a level one Senna does. So yeah. things looking very good in that regard. Uh, Santorin is down here on the bottom side. He has the sweeper, but he's already used it. So there's unlikely to really be a, a good gank path that he could go for in, in Unless, you know, FBI and who he are really overextended. See what DeMonte can do on this one. This is going to be his third play on Twisted Fate. Here comes closer. Like closer has the lane gank already. Gold card comes out. This could be bad for Power of Evil, but puts himself very close to the wall for a quick escape. Does have to use both summoners on that. Yeah, the ghost seemed like a little bit of a panic, honestly. You know, mm -hmm. af after you actually, you know, flash over the wall, I think he used ghost right at the same time there. So maybe he was anticipating that they were going to flash follow and look to actually continue that up. And this is the risk of not playing cleanse. You know, he is playing spellbook, so he can swap over to cleanse later. Yeah. Uh, but when you are not playing cleanse against TF, it's such easy gang setup. And that is one of the major reasons people love this pick right now. You can play something like Lee Sin that is skill shot reliant. You know, you need to land that Q, but guess what? It's pretty easy when they're gold carded. Uh, to land that on a stationary yeah. target. And it's crazy to think, right? He, he, the gold card is over his head. Oh, I won't get caught by it. But time, <laughs> and, time, time and time again, it seems to happen. Closer grabbing bottom scuttle. Looks like top just got grabbed off by Santorin here. So opposite sides of the map for our junglers as they try to trail each other as the Scryer Bloom sees bottom. And Closer gets a little bit more information on this. Oh, yeah, there's not much for him to farm. Yeah. But they are actually moving down the TF2. So I think they're trying to look for a four-man dive. Uh, you know, they could use the Tom Gensh to actually start this up and to tank. And yeah, they're going to go for it. We'll see if Solo wants to try to respond with the TP. But no jungler is down here. Disappeared for a moment. They can still kind of see where they are. Ignar tries to get in front. Damage onto Mash. They're going to take him down first. Ignar grabs a minion. 
And that's going to be each member of Golden Guardians getting out safely here. Power of Evil is going to be able to push mid as that push bottom happens. That was a great dive. I mean, they just actually pulled aggro with Demonte. He throws down the gold card. Mm -hmm. Then once he's taking a turret shot, Tom Kench eats him up, resets that turret aggro, you know, takes it off of him, and it's just a very easy kill over onto Mash, who also had to go back to base prior to that, the tier actually being completed. So not only is he down farm now, FBI was the one who got the kill. So uh, this is just a really clean play. And FlyQuest was not prepared for it whatsoever. You know, there was no TP response from the Orn. Jungler is not in place to actually answer it. You know, this was not even close to working. I think that was trying to be, you know, an anticipated hook. You know, Ignar was maybe trying to yeah. look for someone safeguarding out to that minion or something like that. But uh, Golden Guardians, great early execution and putting their bot lane significantly ahead. Super smart overall as well. The beginning of that replay, we saw Power of Evil backing. So the lane was resetting. TF's five. He's not going to port anywhere. It's safe, right? No, he walks bot lane. And he picked up all the minions on the way back, only two behind. So overall, Golden Guardians, like you were saying, set that up really, really well. Haunter versus Solo in that top lane, 35 to 41. Is Power of Evil one, two, three. Keep stacking him up. He continues to get ganks on him here in this game and stays safe with the summoners down this time. Mm -hmm. And you've also got to remember, you know, that that bottom lane dive basically started at level one with the forcing of Flash on MASH, right? You know, they the kind golf. of had this little river cheese where they got the Flash off him. It wasn't back up for when he got dove. You know, maybe that's a little bit of a different play. Probably still goes down, but, you know, it's, it's following up on the resources that have been taxed from your opponents, right? And that's something that you always love to see. When you yeah. get a cooldown out of your opponents, you need to return and punish them for that. Forcing a Flash is worthless if you don't get an advantage while the Flash is down. And that's something I'd also like to see them try to go back at Power of Evil, who still has his flash down for a couple minutes. Ooh. You can return and try to attack Power of Evil with Closer and Demonte. You know, without that flash, he might go down. Taking a long way around, Ignar has to head back to the lane. Blast cones over to keep himself safe. So Ping goes on to the Drake for now. Golden Guardians just leaving FBI to solo farm down here nice and easy with the Mystic Shots, 48 to 38. And it could be the combo to, for solo top, just 100 damage short on that four towards bot lane. Mash again is the focus, and they're trying to shut down the center blitz lane right away. Just about 400 HP between both of them. It looks like they'll cut one down, but it's not going to be both, as that's the TP coming in. Shockwave in from Power of Evil as he is almost able to trade back the kill, but there's just too much support and utility amongst the Golden Guardians crew. Rinse and repeat, and again, Mash just barely didn't have his flash up. It came up during that play. Thankfully for him, he was able to escape, but Ignar did go down. You know, as soon as they have the level six on Demonte, they set up this play once more. They pull the aggro, you know, with that stun card. They reset it with the mm -hmm. Tom Kench. Rinse and repeat on that bottom side. They are really putting the FlyQuest bottom lane behind. Thankfully for them, Solo is doing work up on that top side. You know, as far as I've seen, there hasn't been any ganks actually going up there, but he almost just solo killed Haunter. Got him incredibly low. I think, honestly, the fact that TF popped his ultimate did kind of save the Jace, because it looked like once the ultimate got popped, Solo wasn't sure if it was coming to top lane or going bot lane. So he kind yep. of hesitated a little bit there when perhaps he could have actually continued the dive and gotten that solo kill. So not only does the Monte execute on a kill on the bot side, he exerts a little bit of pressure uh, because of kind of that fear of the TF ult on the top side that may have saved Hanser. And he talked a little bit about this not being so much of a poke comp you think they would create, but more of a skirmish comp. And boy, are we seeing that already. Instant fights towards the bot lane. And with the ability to poke too, it leaves FlyQuest with little chance to be the one to set up at an objective. They do not want to be there with Fog of War around them. So Golden Guardian setting themselves up here already eight minutes in very nicely. Yeah, they're doing really well. They are up a thousand gold. That is great. But that being said, you know, FlyQuest is is still looking very stable in their solo lanes. The bottom lane is behind, but you know, the, the farm isn't such a big lead on FBI by any right. means. The farm is very close, so there is those kills going over. It hasn't been really a big snowball of objectives or anything like that. So FlyQuest with their scaling, I still think are feeling like pretty well within their comfort zone. You know, when you have Orin winning that 1v1 against the Jace, you're very happy. Graze scales great, Oriana scales great. And you know that there's going to be a lot of squishy members over on the side of Golden Guardians. So later on, you know, really any hook in a team fight could result in a kill, uh, even if it's Tom Kench. Just sure is who he on finding Santorin. Looks like they'll be able to figure out he's there, though. Oriana not walking down. Monte trying to ping that out is FlyQuest using this kind of bit of breathing room to get an advantage on some plates. 
still slightly in the lead. Mash is going to keep himself safe here. It looks like they want to avoid all fights from, from here on out and just keep that vision up on bot side of the map. They have two pink wards that they can continue to protect, or at least on their side of the river for now. We'll see how much they can protect. Yeah, and those pink wards along the river do help a lot. You know, deep vision, mm -hmm. especially a ward over by that raptor pit. That is actually a really key area if you're playing against TF and, and your solo queue games. If he is moving towards bot side and he's playing on this side of the map, having a ward around that raptor area, that is almost always where they will walk past to try to ult towards that bottom lane because you have got to track TF. You have to know when he is leaving lane, when he is cheating towards your side because you can't... Like, you, anytime he's off the map, you want to play defensive, but if you just do that to so much of an extreme, if you just basically act as though TF can be everywhere at all times, yeah. your lanes just passively lose. So it's important to actually get that knowledge and get it confirmed. Right where here, he is, you can see doing. Power of Evil. There you go. Really taking a turret shot just to make sure he wasn't roaming around to port somewhere. Good explanation. Seeing it on screen as it happens. So we got two minutes for the Infernal. Looks like, well, there's no setup just yet. We'll see where they both go for mid here. Two, he is following towards mid, so I feel like he's going to put up wards off of this before he rolls back down to FBI, who again, they leave solo, and he's doing perfectly fine. They've kind of put the fear in FlyQuest so much that, yeah, they'll roam as well, but let's just not try to go on MASH because they'll be here in two seconds with teleports and TF gates. Yeah, yep. TF has the ultimate back again. Roa mm -hmm. is completed. Stopwatch is ready, so the playmaking is there. They do have to respect the fact that Solo does have TP, you know, could look to try to answer that, and, you know, is going to be some very strong hard engage if Solo does make his way down here. You know, he's sitting at a, a pretty strong point of the game, but FlyQuest are kind of just slowing it down, looking to farm. Uh, they know they have the more reliable engage, you know, come yeah. team fight time. I think they're going to be feeling really, really confident about their ability to win in that straight up 5v5, especially because Solo is doing so well. You know, while you have been trying to snowball bot, it hasn't really resulted in any big advantages. They've actually lost more turret plates in that bottom lane. They're not really ahead much of, of any farm. So, you know, yeah. FBI and Huhi aren't making much of that advantage. Oh, Did they bait him in. Horn, horn there. Oh, I like the hit back before he got stunned. Doesn't hit anybody, though. Solo trying to play it tricky here, but it looks like he will fall, and they'll give it up to DeMonte. Everybody's getting a piece of this one, as now they will be able to push the top side of the map. 30 seconds onto that Infernal. We'll see if they just leave someone here and close their heads down to the bot side. They have the Rift Herald also, so they could actually drop Herald and just try to go for first turret That's if they do point. want. I think that may be the call. You know, I was just talking about how Haunter isn't really ahead, and if you don't want to win in team fights, if you don't think you can win in team fights, then you've got to be able to have a side lane advantage, somewhere that you can play through in you know, utilizing this Jason TF. So I do think it's going to be about got the 1 3 1. Getting Hauntzer ahead here with the gold in his pockets is going to be helpful, but DeMonte could be in some trouble. Oh, you can see how bad FlyQuest wants it right now. Every last drop for DeMonte there in mid. Oh, Ignar! Oh, oh my god, the flash from DeMonte! You gotta be kidding! The thumbs up, baby! Ignar with the fast fingers, but DeMonte even faster! I love that from Ignar. That is some confidence. Just the flash over the wall there, and now they are on this dragon, but in goes closer. Closer's confidence as well, and it looks like that may close the deal for Ignar here as he is left. Overdrive could get him out of this one. Honk, honk. Nope, he goes down. It's going to be who he trying to push forward on the mash. Gets the flash out of the Senna, and that is going to be the Cloud's quickening. We have third Drake Cloud 2 now going over to Golden Guardians, and they, as I was looking at their compositions that they have been running as ale, a lot of this global pressure, the Nocturne, the TF, they run a bit of Orm for Quasi-Global. They're, they're loving being able to control the maps. Yeah, they really are. And, uh, you know, that was a good job by Golden Guardians to actually get over there, still contest that dragon. They have made a play yeah. up towards the top side. They got first turret. They are able to get there in time to still push Santorin off the dragon and secure that you know, for the squad. So, you know, grabbing that second early dragon always, I think, is is a big factor when you are playing more of the early game comp uh, because you can sort of stack that, you can threaten that win condition of having a soul. And that can be the difference, you know, getting those early dragons between forcing your opponents to 5v5 you at a time where they are not ready or giving them the extra five, 10 minutes to get their items and get to a point where you can no longer win. See who the next setup is. Three plates on mid and bot, four golden guardians. Nothing on the top side here as Solo is just kind of farming these waves as they come pushed in from Haunter. Teleports up. Ooh, there's a nice grab coming in onto Huhi. Shockwave back, quite a bit used onto him, but they do want to 
stop the map movement for Golden Guardians a little bit, and that will help. Yep, just going to take him off the map for a little bit. They do take him down, grab a kill for Santorum, which is always nice. And, you know, I, I don't mind committing uh, those those alts for just the support at this point because there's not any objective that you're about to go to. And now we're going to see, can he mad life it? Nope. Mm. Predicting that he would juke back into it, but not quite reading him correctly. But, yeah, I mean, it's like if, if there's a dragon that's about to be up and you're going to fight for it and you commit all that stuff to kill Tom Kench, okay, that's pretty questionable. Uh, but they are kind of making the bet that their alts are going to be back and ready by the time they need to actually fight. Looks like they're actually pushing to hover around that pixel brush right now. Closer and who he hip and hip as they move in. Maybe they just know there's a lot of pink wards here and they want this vision back. Scuttle as well could be that love. This who he goes forward. Wow, they're oh my word, they all just keep popping out of the ground. What is this? There's no uh, yeah. members of Golden Guardians, and then there was four. I think I blinked just once. Yeah, I mean, they're in trouble now here, too. MASH could actually get dove, theoretically. They are just going to try to back it off, though, as they oh, saw FBI. Power of Evil was <laughs> roaming over. But Nice little play as Santorin wanted to grab the scuttle, but they didn't have the control for him to really safely go for that. And again, you have got to remember the TF ultimate. This is what you know. You asked me about. It's like, what does Graves have to keep in mind? Well, that's what I was talking about. You've got to keep the TF ultimate in <laughs> mind. You can't right just be farming. Map. You can't just be farming like that in the middle of the map without your teammates around and with the TF alt up. So he gives over an easy kill, and that is also going to give Golden Guardians the time to move over here and turn that into a Rift Herald also. And things are happening so fast here for FlyQuest right now. It's probably hard to figure out when those windows are. Yeah, they know about Demonte. A few more teleports are coming up in just half of that time. So it's going to be really tough to know when again they can teleport into a situation like that. Power of Evil still pressuring forward. They know they need to get this outer line of turrets down to move the wards forward and have a little bit more control over the fights on objectives. Ignar and Mash still farming their hearts out here. Now down by about 20 CS, or I'm sorry, 10 or 11 CS, as I recount. We're 301 here for FBI on the Ezreal, and they banned him out for three marksmen right off the bat. Mm -hmm. But going to be feeling really comfortable yeah. on that Ezreal. You know, he has, he has no problem playing that. Uh, and with those three early kills, you know, he's going to be at that two item power spike so incredibly fast. You know, I talked about grabbing that third dragon, how usually teams do want to try to fight at that. I think FlyQuest would want to prevent putting them on soul point this early. Uh, but I mean, if Ezreal is sitting on two items, you know, at, at 16, 17 minutes uh, and is ready for that dragon fight, it's like, well, I, I don't know. Do you even want to take it? You know, you've got two items on the jungler. Hauntzer could potentially finish another item before this. So uh, Golden Guardians is going to be ridiculously strong for this fight, and I'm not sure, you know, if FlyQuest is, is going to be in a position to to win it. What's So it's one shockwave, one grab, right? Right? It's like the Captain Flowers call. So you, only <laughs> need, you only need one. Which one it's can true. it be, though? I feel like at this point, it's like one or two because of where we are in the game and where the minion waves need to be pushed. So you have some time. It's just looking like that window for a grab is smaller and smaller, even if they are grabbing Golden Guardian for retaliation coming from them is just shock and awe. Here they're going to push mid with the second Rift Herald. They were able to get both in the game and every Drake so far as they move down for what will be Drake number three. Yep, and they actually just used that Rift Herald to make FlyQuest respect the mid lane push. All of FlyQuest had to roam over, and guess where Golden Guardians are? They're on the Dragon. Now it's uncontestable. You can't actually move over here uh, because it's just going to be gone before you even get there. So Golden Guardians uses the Rift Herald to avoid even having a fight over by that. And, you know, checking in on Mash, he's now at 29 stacks uh, at 18 minutes. So not too many souls. Does have his first range upgrade, but um, it is, you know, a fair bit slower than you probably expect. Uh, from someone playing more of the support Senna style, especially against the Tom Gench, who's a champion that you can oftentimes really kind of farm yeah. those souls off pretty effectively. I like the rally there, Zale. FlyQuest was like, all five mid, mid turret, quickly back. Hans was like, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just farm Bob. But I like it. FlyQuest was definitely in need of a bit of global gold and pressure off the map. So they call the executive order to crush mid turret. And Ooh, I like this. 4K gold behind. This is like the Jat special. Jat used to Ooh. love playing Senna and love doing this, where you know he would just kind of follow around his jungler a lot and oh, actually and pick up, up uh, okay. the Senna okay. stacks. Well, um, gonna... Mash went over and, and actually grabbed the stacks from the red buff, but he did not pick the ones up off those 
uh, golems is it actually can be a lot of stacks out of the jungle so it is something that's pretty effective if you don't have something better to do sometimes just following your jungler around for a clear and picking up all the souls there uh, can be a really good way to escalate that oh nice devour by who he's saving Demonte. Nice dodge. They get themselves to safety. Knowing the rocket grab is down may give them a little bit of safety and movement. It doesn't look like they'll use it, though, as they back off. Not enough forward wards. And we will still see Fly Quest getting resources and putting themselves back up to reset for that fight. I like what you were saying there, as we see him kind of farming it out, and then he was just like, oh, TF gate. I don't want to go back in the jungle for those. <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's scary, man. so scary right now for them to be on the map trying to do that. And bad goes to worse if you give over too many of these uh, cloud dragons as really aggressive trade here. It could be in Oh, nice mm. devour. He's so good right now, Hoogie, but he's uh, still lose FBI on Golden Guardian's side. Hoogie tries to save him. And we have a fight towards the bot lane. Just a back and forth as Solo hit a good volcanic rupture onto Haunter with that charge. And now it looks like Matt or FBI will be dead for the first time. A slight bounty picked up. It doesn't look like it's something that will change the game all too much here. Five to two currently in kills, two to one in turrets. We'll have to see where FlyQuest may want to put their next kind of strength here. In yeah, it was, was a really nice shutdown, though. Another kill going to Santorin. And I think that FBI and Huhi just kind of underestimated how much damage and follow-up there would be. You know, feeling like, okay, I'm going to devour you when you get hooked. That's going to keep you safe. But, uh, oh, nope. Almost. Get him? Okay. That brittle would probably be oh, real close, but it's not going to be not even close, baby. That's what they say. Uh, but, yeah, close enough. Uh, Azale, does it pain you when that's missed and you have shown these people how, how to do that? <laughs> it's a lot harder to do it on a moving Jace than it is on a target dummy, to be fair. But... Um, <laughs> You know, we'll say I would have nailed that every time. Of course I wouldn't. Uh, but, uh, little. Uh, you know, it's one of those situations where if he lands that Searing Charge, he probably does get that kill. Uh, mm. Still, it's it's a great trade from Solo. Solo has actually been winning this, this matchup, you know, pretty well in the 1v1. He has been doing a, an admirable job there. And, I mean, end of the day, you used your ultimate and you got Hansu's Flash without actually forcing your Flash out. So now the Jace is going to have a lot less side lane pressure. He's got to be worried about, you know, any potential kills on him next time that ultimate is up. Um, so well done by Solo, despite not actually being able to pick up that kill. Abyssal Voyage. Ooh, to the right side. Closer is a little off on the edge of this fight. I think that's why they decided to pull off. And it looks like mid lane could be a turret. All five of the FlyQuest members now putting themselves towards mid lane with a bit of a cannon wave. Do they have a... Not enough damage to get it through here. That flash from Ignar coming in on... What is that hex flash every yep. so often is definitely keeping them back from these turrets. Yeah, and, and really FlyQuest is trying to focus on defending this mid lane turret. They don't want Power of Evil to kind of lose his, his bastion of safety there in the mid lane where he has been farming. Um, yeah. And that hex flash is a nice little move, right? You know, it's Ignar threatening that hook so that FBI doesn't have confidence to actually step forward and auto the turret after having W'd it. Because mm -hmm. when you have that W up and you get the Sheen auto off on the turret, it's a tremendous amount of damage, right? It's, you know, then very close to actually being knocked down. So yeah. he's just trying to zone. He starts charging up that Hex Flash, says you've got to respect this or you could get hooked and die. So they create a little bit of pressure there and are able to defend their turret as a result. That's going to make it much easier for them to control this whole area and have access to the Dragon Pit, which is important because guess what? It is soul time here for Golden Guardians in 15 seconds. Uh, this is a fight they really want to win. If they can grab this soul, it would be huge for them. Ooh. Good cross damage, about a thousand across the Fly Quest team. They'll heal that up quite quickly though. FBI oh. toying with Solo and Demonte's a searing still charge. Starting. So I think they're just going to try to steal this and keep sending Demonte for the base. If they could just even delay uh, this take, will we go for it? Oh! That was close. I like to try, I like to try, but now can they stop the backs? There's going to be no chase. It might look like Haunter is trying to fire a blast or shock blast in here, but they'll lose an inhibitor turret on the side of FlyQuest as Demonte continues to push top. Inhibitor turrets open there, so now they can start to open up a little bit more with the split push here and have Demonte wreak havoc on multiple lanes. Yeah, you can tell how worried they are about the 5v5. You know, despite the fact that they have a gold lead and three dragons to zero going into mm -hmm. that, they weren't actually willing to commit to just a straight up fight, right? They, they feel like, okay, 
A lot of the key items are completed now for Power of Evil. Power of Evil already had an upgraded death cap from Orn. There's two items on Graves. Orn has his double upgraded items. So they're saying we actually probably lose this 5v5 right now. So instead, go for the steal from Closer. Try to get something guaranteed up on that top side. So they've opened up the base. And that was honestly really close. I mean, Closer didn't get his, his smite off, but... Um, he was in the pit at the right time, and that very easily could have been a steal, and them really getting everything. Could have been clo closer. <laughs> closer? Yeah, something like that. Could have been uh, closer for closer. There you go. Uh, Baron is up, tempting both teams. Right now, Golden Guardians could just use that as a quick trap for fly quest. And here they're setting up one. Closer is going to be the man in front to try and jump over and help Hanser out if he looks like he gets caught out of the So they decided to back off of that one. It's just really trying to get the picks on FlyQuest right now. You have gold cards, you have a few things that can catch people. So as soon as you see one out of place, call out Demonte and he will be there. Mm -hmm. Yep, we would love for him to be able to join to the sidelines. And as you rank up your ultimate, you know, you can you can ult further. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there, there is more ability to make those cross map plays. Uh, it is interesting, though, that Hanser has kind of committed much more to this lethality build because if if you're going for this build, it generally is saying, hey, I want to actually group and poke, and that's how we're going to we're gonna look to play out the game. But he's not really grouping at all. You know, he's just kind of playing more committed to that side lane. And if you're going to commit to the split push anyway, if you don't actually intend to group and, and look for the poke and then the following 5v5, then you should just go for more of a 1v1 style build, you know, against that aura. You can go things like... Blade of the Rune King into a Black Cleaver and, you know, a Lord Dominix and be way more effective in that 1v1. So, is an interesting choice here from Hauntzer. We'll see if he can make it work if he does group later on. Oh, He's on there flank. you go. Nice shot blast. Yeah, going to be seen by a ward right now. And Power of Evil is going to rethink this one real quick. True shot barrage. Right by. I felt the wind on that one. <laughs> That was, uh, Seraph's actually popped, so I'm not sure if it hit Power of Evil and got absorbed, or Power of Evil just got nervous that it might hit him and kill him. Either way, he did actually pop that, so uh, that cooldown is down, and looks like he's going to be working towards Leandries now, so going for a very high DPS build here on the Orianna. He always is kind of that, that wing condition, it feels like, for the team. Yep. You know, Mash is, is not going to be carrying a lot of the heavy lifting here in these late game team fights as they do just kind of use that alt for disengage again. They're trying to keep their mid lane turret safe. That is so important for them. Demonte is threatening the top lane inhibitor, but just going to alt out. Yeah, we saw Hauntzer as well, just playing in the fog of war there, hitting FlyQuest with Shock Blast after Shock Blast. Ignar doing a nice job at denying that. Is True Shot Barrage back up for Golden Guardians? Hauntzer is back in the bot lane mm -hmm. and really just waiting to see if Monte can get away from what would be a mid lane fight to get back into top and re-push. Uh, there's a method to this madness, but it seems like FlyQuest is shutting them down a little bit here and there. FlyQuest is able to get another turret and it's slowly going in their favor. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, FlyQuest is, is doing a really good job keeping their mid lane turret alive. It's so important yeah. because this game is going to be decided At largely all around objectives. Costs. But you know, but that being <laughs> said, they are falling further and further behind on gold because of it, right? You know, you you commit a ton of your resources and members to actually defend yeah. there in mid lane. Well, you're going to lose minions bot. You're going to lose minions top. Monster actually just killed the tier two off bot. You know, extending the gold lead, and they're up near a five thousand gold lead at this point, which is quite significant. Yes, the Orin items are, are really kind of evening out a lot of that. Um, but it, it is something that they do have to be concerned about, right? You know, th this is a game that can be ended through 1 3 1 shenanigans. And if you lose too many inhibitor towers, if you lose too much of that kind of security in your base in the side lanes, then uh, you might never even get to get that 5v5. It could just be a hard commit to split push from Hanser and Demonte and looking to backdoor it in the game. Yeah, it's becoming overwhelming for FlyQuest. Too many things to react to. They need to find a way to set the pace of the game in their favor. So Golden Guardians is reacting to FlyQuest. Well, right. looks now like they uh, might be able to get their damage. 5v5 because, you know, both teams are grouped here and it is going to be soul point again. So FlyQuest might actually get that Ooh. opportunity to be the proactive team and look to the engage here. Riff. Closer tried to go in for, I think, a quick kick on somebody, but got hit back. Let's see who gets hit up. Gray health, obviously, for Tom Kench. Not going to be able to use it, and he goes down immediately. Ignar is pretty low, and here comes a shield from the rest of the team. They're going to be pretty safe. As FlyQuest moves now down towards the Drake, trying to stop Soul here. This will be huge if they can shut down Golden Guardians. Now 28 and a half minutes into the game. FlyQuest have had their backs against the wall, and they will start up the objective to get Drake number two. Does pressure from Golden Guardians now go towards mid? 
as well. It looks like they're going to try to stop minions on this one. No, get the inhibitor. It looks like Demonte is going all the way for the base. Yeah, he's just ulting towards top lane. They got the mid tier one. They're going to get the mid tier two potentially. Can't see how low oh, it is. But they're actually Azale. taking down Demonte. It's going to be a 1v1. Solo loves these. Demonte with the dodge on the volcanic rupture. Fancy feet. He's doing the tango, and it takes two. <laughs> Demonte gets out alive. FlyQuest do grab the dragon, though. Again, Closer is unable to actually get in there to try to steal it. Um, but, you know, once they got that pick on Huhi, there was no chance of taking that 5v5. And it just looks like, in general, FlyQuest is going to run the 5v5 all game long. It's very hard to actually burst down someone on FlyQuest when you have the Orianna shield with all the AP behind it, plus yep. Mash with the healing there. You know, the ultimate coming across from Senna is going to be a additional shielding. So it's tough to actually burst through all of that. And... You know, FlyQuest has as such a formidable 5v5, and while while we are seeing Golden Guardians like play the map well, and, and you know, and kind of spread it out and take towers, there's no more outers to grab. So we'll see right. if they can actually have an opportunity to to really deal more of a death blow and knock down some of these inhibitors. Because if it just continues to stay as it is, I do think that FlyQuest are getting more and more into a winning position where. I think they're, they're getting close to the point where they're confident that they could actually just go towards something like a bear and say, all right, come and fight us or we take this. <laughs> I think it can happen soon. A lot of pink wards in both inventories. Make sure we know that intent is to keep placing them forward and fight with those wards. Solo clears up what is the last of this cannon wave before he meets Haunter in lane. Or actually, he's going to head off of this one. Let's see if teleports are up around. Mash has Haunter... Monte FBI, so definitely a lot of movement can come from Golden Guardians. This fly quest is well. Be seeing Demonte top now. Monster soon in the bot lane for the first one three one. Mm -hmm. Just another check in here on the Senna. Fifty four stacks there at thirty minutes, so closing in on that third range upgrade. You know Senna obviously scaling very well with that. You get the AD every stack, you get the additional range every 20. Uh, and you know, getting that additional range makes it so much easier to have consistent damage output in these team fights because you know it's just a lot safer when you are kind of sitting a bit further back and kind of can get access to some of these champions without mm. putting yourself in that engage range. I think how things slow down in games like this. <laughs> you see, Golden Guardians is kind of just going through the motions. Obviously, they have to get their minions up right now to, to figure out how they can get a good fight and execute over ward. But as as you get a team that's so far ahead by gold, and then you actually still need these dominoes in place before you can make it happen against FlyQuest. FlyQuest is doing a good job at knocking everything down, not letting too much get set up. I, I wonder how these fights are going to happen once we see Golden Guardians have to be choked in that base gate. Obviously, they'll be trying to split themselves between lanes, but FlyQuest does have a team that's starting to go forward now. Yeah, I mean, I actually feel like the game is going more in the favor of FlyQuest, you know, for sure. his last 10 minutes. Um, yes, they are still far down in gold, but, you know, they have now gotten the last two dragons. You know, if, if they get the next dragon, they are then on soul point, and you're at the point where maybe you're forcing Golden Guardians to come to you, like it or not. Golden Guardians has been trying to just, okay, they go to dragon, we go elsewhere, we take objectives. Um, but it's at the point where, you know, basically it has to be an inhibitor or, or it's nothing because, you know, there, there's not much as far as easy objectives to grab on the map mm -hmm. um, for Golden Guardians anymore. Oh, it's a beast. Level 17, too. Making sure he can get that CS. Making sure he can help his team out. Has upgraded a lot of items. Rooted onto Demonte as he gets himself out safe with the Ornhorn. Comes back now. Closer tries to get in for a quick kick, and it's going to be on Power Evil, but he gets himself out safe. As Closer now trying to save that Guardian Angel, but Santorin on his heels. The rest of FlyQuest moving forward as the tanks are in front. Let's see how the fight continues as Golden Guardians dashes to safety to try and rebuttal. Now they assess how they can attack FlyQuest, and this is going to be a shockwave from Power of Evil. He's waited so long to use it. Can they follow up on this the end of the line and yes it is for Haunter as he goes down FlyQuest is dancing these out perfectly and finds the advantage on Golden Guardians yeah, that was such a big shockwave there from Power of Evil look like Golden Guardians were going to be able to turn around the fight because despite the fact that you know Closer had gotten really low and multiple members had gotten really low the Ezreal and the Jace were still very healthy and had a tremendous amount of poke that they were looking to return but as they step forward they lost track of that Orianna ball Power of Evil catches them and it allows Santorin to to flash in for that Ooh. kill on Haunts or winning them the team fight. So like deja vu with Santorin just going down there, backing up, going down there, fighting somebody, and then he finally <laughs> comes up with that kill. He wanted it, and we have seen FlyQuest kind of 
chasing these kills all game, not pushing themselves over the line to get them, but they were looking for DeMonte mid all game. They've been looking for other kills, and finally, they get a few, and the team is really coming online. Yep, and they're just going to move right towards this dragon, looking for their third dragon. So their ultimate cooldowns are going to get so low now. You know, FlyQuest will be sitting on three of those. Uh, Demonte again, going to look for the back door. He's just ulting straight in the base. So this should be inhibitor take. Ooh. Oh, the steal! Oh, we he got, got it! it. He got Soul Drake closer. Can he make it out? He safeguarded to himself, but the team is drawn away. They have to get to the base. Demonte is just going to take the inhibitor. So actually no resulting fight here as FlyQuest is trying to get their waves in position, at least in mid, and make sure no more base damage happens. Golden Guardians now playing the game of cat and mouse, knowing the fights aren't going their way. Yeah, they needed that so badly. You know, if you give over that dragon, put FlyQuest at soul That's point huge. when you can't win those team fights, that is so big for them, but instead, Closer just steals this one away. It felt like there was a little bit of panic from FlyQuest. It looked like a lot of the FlyQuest members were moving away from the dragon before it was dead because they were panicking about the fact that Demonte was in the base. And I'm not sure if we're going to get a replay, but, you know, it's one of those situations where FlyQuest should have been able to actually zone out the Lee Sin, keep him away, deny any potential steal, and set up the soul point for themselves. Instead, this split push creates this kind of error of panic where people are like, crap, I gotta get back to the base, and they forget about the Lee Sin. They end up losing that soul, which is gonna be really nice uh, for Golden Guardians. What a play. And you can see that he came from Fog of War down there as he came around Tribrush, so mm -hmm. they only see him at the last second. And thank you very much, he says. Closer making it happen. And he's been on the radar for quite a while, making these impact plays and showing up. Can Golden Guardians finish this out, though? That is teamwork here, and we're trying to see if they can take down FlyQuest, the team that sits atop the table still. And we, and we see why, right? FlyQuest here mm -hmm. finding late-game fights where they're behind 5K or more, and they're still finding ways to make this look like Golden Guardians is in an even game. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're they're being very resilient, and they, they kind of drafted for this powerful team fight, and that's what they're looking to play around. They have better engaged than Golden Guardians. They, you know, they have better 5v5, better frontliners, um, but Golden Guardians is trying to play towards their win conditions. Get out to the side lane. They're trying to utilize yep. the Jace and the TF together now to try to pick off Solo. If you can get this 2v1 kill onto Solo, then all of a sudden you can just crack the base. You can peel apart. FlyQuest, and you know they've got to try to find their moment to do it. Also, if FlyQuest overcommits too many members to deal with that Jason Ooh. and TF, then well, guess what? The other three can try to start a Baron and see if they can actually look for something there. Felt that damage. Bang. Still have two and a half minutes on the inhibitor on the bot side. They are it's chipping so away at Solo. Oh, I'm sorry, top side inhibitor as they chip away a solo. Ignar, close to going down. It could be one final shot. Send a shot coming through to get that shield on the side, and it looks like they'll be able to get a nice Ornhorn horn. And the return damage going in. Power of Evil with that dissonance follow-up was huge, so he's starting to spit out the damage. Oh, yeah, I mean, he is on four full items. Really, yeah. really strong at this point. And I've also got to give some credit to Solo. I think this is honestly a pretty big brain build. Uh, he went for the Warmog's third. And that just means it's like, okay, well, Jace and, and TF, they're trying to poke you down. So you can actually just walk up, tank all of their damage, wave clear, and then, sure, they do yeah. 20, 30, 40% of your health, but you back off and you wait for the next wave and you're full health again with the Warmox. He also went Locket, so when it comes to the 5v5, he doesn't need additional tankiness, honestly. He doesn't need a stone plate. Right. The only way they lose is his teammates getting burst down. Locket yeah. helps prevent that. So Solo is itemized so intelligently, and FlyQuest are threatening the Baron. They get the TP out. They get actually double TP out here, so they're just going to back off. Let's see if Uhi Abyssal Voyages too. He's trying to sprint out of base. And that locket for Solo was actually purchased pretty soon, right after he got his first few items. So he was thinking these fights are going to happen. Now I have been in the side lane by myself, and we have seen that locket coming into play very big. So doing quite a bit from the top to also support the team throughout these fights. A big pickup here for FlyQuest coming into the yeah. summer split for Solo. I mean, honestly, I just don't see how Jace and TF ever kill him with the Warmogs. The only way you're ever going to kill him is if you got him low and then dove mm -hmm. him once he's already low. When you're sitting at full health with the Warmogs, good luck. And he Kindle can constantly too. trade out his health to just, you know, 
clear the wave and then back off. And I think this is a really, really smart adaptation. You know, far too many players uh, just kind of go on autopilot and they just do the same build every time. They do their Abyssal, their Sunfire, then they get a Stone Plate. Ooh. And, you know, that's kind of the route that they do play. So smart stuff from Solo, you know, showing you know, one of the reasons why they have kind of gone with him as their starter. He did look better with them in playoffs, I think, than Viper. Uh, and he has been you know, playing pretty admirably so far in the Summer Split. You know, looking at that fact that we have Cloud Soul on the map, and then looking at Power of Evil CS on Orianna, he has been running from lane to lane. Yeah. He has Event Horizon Demonte. No wonder he's zeroing out people with a Shockwave Dissonance. Can they get to Baron, though? That's the question. As we look up from the inventory to see the objective is down at half HP. Ignar's Rocket Grab is now on cooldown, giving who he and the team a little bit more room to work with. TF is on the bot side of the map, but you can see Demonte shuffling back and forth to see if he needs to gate in for help. If Solo crosses a ward, Demonte is going straight for that turret. Uhi and the team doing a nice job at trying to keep this one still at half HP and not letting it heal, but this is one hell of a dance where they are not actually doing anything, Isaac. I'm impressed by this. Minion waves are crashing into each lane for FlyQuest. They have to make a choice, and that choice was to eat a Shock Blast. They back off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it was actually pretty smart what Golden Guardians was doing. Right. Uh, you have the Death Dance and the Blade of the Rune King on Israel, so he can basically just tank the Baron, uh, not <laughs> worried too much about taking damage at that point. And he's just trying to make them send too many members to the Baron so that his solo laners can crack the base. But FlyQuest doesn't really take the bait. They don't overcommit. They keep Solo close enough so that he can actually respond. He cleared out the bottom wave, moved over towards mid lane, so he can either go Ooh. to the Baron or back to that bottom wave. And Solo is just not panicking. He's ha handling this really, really well. And now it is going to be Elder time. So there is that potential of objective trade. Oh, oh. nice hook. Oh, right after he spit out the uh, opponent of his, I'm sorry, his teammate. Gonna lose one there, who he goes down. And that looks like they are also, also gonna lose closer here in a moment. He may be able to get a kill for himself as the kick Monte comes the base. up. Getting discombobulated in that fight. And now DeMonte is gonna be taking the top inhibitor once again. You can't blink, he's gonna be there, but they're gonna try to chase him down. The flash comes out, and he is gonna go zooming up that top side. Maybe stay for a moment. If you see Solo leave, he'll keep that lane pressure on. With Closer and who he dead, though, that is free Elder. You take the Elder, and now he might actually just be dead. They know he stays. They're like, it's Demonte. Of course he's going to stay. Look at that move. Sending Tribute out, and it looks like Solo could be by himself now as they lose Ignar, and this turns into a really sore situation for FlyQuest. Solo's able to flash to keep himself alive. Power of Evil's here, and they know how much damage he can do. He backs off, and so does the rest of FlyQuest. They're going to be able to grab another Drake, or the Elder for themselves, rather, as we now move on. Yeah, good job from Haunter, actually, to rotate up towards that top side to save Demonte and allow them to trade a kill back. But with Elder over on FlyQuest, mm -hmm. they have such an advantage around that Baron Pit now. And still, it's never been anything more than just that top lane inhibitor going the way of Golden Guardians. They keep going back to it, but they haven't gotten an opportunity to really get to those Nexus turrets, to get to the other inhibitors. Uh, FlyQuest has been too stalwart around the base. You can see the gold is closing, and when you add in all the, the, the value from those extra Ornn items, really FlyQuest is just ahead in combat yeah. power at this point. Um, you know, depending on how much value you want to place on the Cloud Soul, that is something working for Golden Guardians. But they've honestly lost a couple games this split. At least one, if not two, where they had Soul. Uh, the game against Team Liquid, they had Soul and they lost. And I want to say there was maybe one other. So Golden Guardians has not had the best record uh, when getting Soul because they often index for these really kind of like hard to execute early game teams that right. don't really team fight very well. And uh, they're, they're just not able to close out the game a lot of the time. And again, now it's Demonte. They're actually going five-man bot. They're actually going to just try to commit to this this bot lane, potentially. But it's going to be a bare recall soon. Hornhorn Horn comes out. They're not going to be able to get that one off. And it looks like they save Solo for only a moment. Mash is there alone. And yes, they're going to chase the Ezreal in. Haunter goes hammer form, which means he can't do too much damage. It's going to be traded back by Mash. But he's on the center. And it's going to be oh. a Q forward on the fountain. Not healing too much because he's not going to the first step. And that's going to be the Zanyas keeping him actually dead, if you will. That's the shutdown you can see on your screen. As now, it's the bot in him going down. The pressure has been on, and FlyQuest finally cracked a little bit more. That was actually so smart from Golden Guardians. I mean, they recognize there's no way we can actually do this with just two. We can't fight them with the Elder at Baron anyway, so maybe leave Closer over there, pray for a steal, but they actually Tom Kench all the Ezreal down there. They have four members showing up all of a sudden, 
diving solo, taking him down. Mash TP's in to try to save him. He dies too, so now it's two inhibitors down. And yes, you still can't 5v5, but if you can avoid them, more of the base is open, but who he now? No flash. He's going to be gone. Ooh, Santorin comes flying in. Beautiful job by Ignar. We have to remember that new Blitz update definitely ignores his shield, so bye-bye. Mm -hmm. That's some big damage coming in from the Static Shock. Ignar feeling good about kind of picking himself back up there with a kill. As he's been hitting some hooks, but also missing. Playing a lot of that aggressive game with the flash, and he has been helping the team through that. You don't always have to hit the hooks. Look at it. Now he's just showing off. True. Nailed that Scuttle. Scuttle can actually have some pretty good jukes, though, to be fair. Uh, yes. I've, I've missed a skill shot or two of, in my time on the on, You on definitely the get, get the teammate emotes out of that one. <laughs> the question mark pings all start coming out. You're like, it's not my fault. Blitz. It dodged. Hmm. No objectives for now. So a minute and a half onto the Baron buff to wear off three minutes for our Elder Drake. And still very much. Uh, safe in the way of outer turrets for Golden Guardian. Yeah. But that means gold for FlyQuest. I don't really know what they're going to do with that gold after basically having full pockets. But uh, full build now for Power of Evil. Elixirs are going to be what he's chugging down. Uh, Mash did have a stopwatch in the previous fight, but now he has a BF sword. Uh, yeah, Mash. And a few others. Uh, stopwatch on Santorin, so another item there possibly. Yep, you know, these guys can, can finish out their full item builds. You can yep. go back for, for more ideal setups for late game or, or swap things out. Um, but it's going to be the same game plan. Golden Guardian's just going to be looking to, to split, to try to avoid fights, to try to delay FlyQuest <laughs> and, and just peel apart the base. And now, I mean, they have the bot and the top open. So, you know, with those two inhibitors down, it does get a lot more difficult. You can't just have Solo safely parked under a turret wave clearing bot. Um, you know, this is going to be more of a, a difficult situation to navigate because FlyQuest knows if they can ever get a 5v5, they're going to win. But Golden Guardian's objective is to just never give them that fight, to always avoid them, to use the Tom Kench ultimate and the TF ultimate and the J split push to just fly into the base and threaten to close. And that makes it really, really hard for FlyQuest because if you're trapped in that base and you can never actually feel like you can move out and look for that engage, you know, the game just kind of continues to extend and extend. Top inhibitor coming back up. A little bit of relief here for Power of Evil and team. As they now use these minion waves to at least get them off their half of the map. If they can get past River, it'll feel very nice to at least fight in their own jungle. Have a vision that works for them. Golden Guardians trying to own the bottom side of the half with the map objective free. For now, they can work this bottom inhibitor minion wave in so they can try to do the last bit of damage on mid and top once again. It's slow going here. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's interesting because you know what needs to happen at this point in the game for both teams. And they know. So it's all about who makes that mistake. You know, it, it isn't who got the lead earlier, this or that. The game's even now, basically. Yeah. Inhibitor's down. It, it's, you can say it's not even. Sure, that sounded weird. But and either way, a big fight, and they're on the other side of the map to the Nexus. Yeah, I mean, it's just two teams with very different objectives, with very different yeah. strengths and weaknesses, and, you know, you kind of know how, how each team wants to win, as you say, uh, and that makes it, you know, a very kind of clear-cut way to play out the game, and it's just who can execute better. It's very easy to make split-second decisions that go right or wrong in the split push. They're going for solo again. Four members here. Oh, taking down the biggest one. They chip away. Have they brought the right tools? The shield goes out onto him. The heals go out onto him, and the destiny's going to wear off. Solo stays alive, but he gets back into the fight, but put down a Rupture and a slow. Power people's dead. And top lane is going down quick. Demonte and Haunter are going in fast as that was going to be a gate towards the top. I was wondering where it might have been and my eyes didn't catch it, but now it is. Golden Guardian starting to fall as FlyQuest start to bite back. FBI is getting pushed out of the base. Solo's only got one shot left. Can FBI come in big? He says, open up this and they're it. coming in. Golden Guardian's going to shut down Santorin and he says, okay. Running through the base. It's going to be 47 minutes on the clock. Golden Guardians are going to be knocking down the Nexus turrets and they will be riding the ship here in the summer split as they take down FlyQuest. What a crazy ending. You know, I was watching the minimap there trying to see what exactly was happening with Power of Evil. It looked like Power of Evil was trying to actually TP from top lane down to that bottom lane okay. and lost track of the fact that Demonte and Hauntzer were actually over there and got on top of them. So not only did the teleport get interrupted, you get stunned up, you get piled on, he gets knocked down, and he was that key damage dealer for FlyQuest. Without Power of Evil, you actually can't win those 5v5s. So the double soul laners find one mistake mistake where power people lost track of where people were they kill him off it's his first death of the game and that is all it took they close the game out
Yeah. And that was a bit of a wild one. Credit to Golden Guardians for not crumbling in what was this crazy split push situation. Wild is a great word for it. I like that one. Uh, looking at uh, how this game could have played out, now looking again, Orn, Graves, Oriana, Senna, and Blitz for FlyQuest, right? So if we, if we would have expected that Golden Guardian gets barren a bunch, how do they clear waves? And that's actually what it came down to, right? They needed Oriana, basically the one that could clear waves, in a different side lane when, when that fight was happening. But, so coming down to it, I think Golden Guardians knew that. Scaling is always a thing. Everybody's always saying scaling. We scale, they scale. And I'm sure FlyQuest <laughs> had that in mind as they were behind 5K at one point and came back to bring it to even. Just the inhibitors kept falling on either side that really kept them from doing anything to an advantage. Yeah, I mean, it is tough, right? FlyQuest clearly was win winning the 5v5s. They were clearly taking control of those team fights, but the one Dragon Steel getting soul for Golden Guardians was Ooh. huge from Closer. Uh, that really made a very big difference in the game. And it's these small panic moments. You've got to stay so composed yeah. and really make no mistakes against these split push teams. So I do think it was so smart from Golden Guardians to just hard commit to the split push. They know they couldn't win 5v5. So not only are your soul laners appearing, now all of a sudden, Tom Kench is alting in with an additional person too. So they're spreading the map, pushing waves, making FlyQuest respond, and then sending four, sometimes five members to a lane like that. And you just can't always <laughs> respond. They were moving quick, and they knew they had to act fast. So it is now time to take a break. When we return, Pastry is going to be joining FBI for the Verizon post-game interview. 